Outside play for Astralis. JW here with his USP. And he's got Crims over here in May. Dupree opening up. Crims trying to shut it down. And instead, he actually gets dinked and has to fall back. Brolin with the dollies. He's falling in love with Keto, but he only gets one. Now S Tag's got them. They're getting passed around. <laughs> Let's see. Dorbaret is. Oh, plenty of ammo. He can spam everything. It's kind of scary. And this lowest site, well, S Tag looking to get stuck in. I really, me, I honestly, like, you know, with, with the whole picking a player to watch, I went with Brolin, but I also originally went with S Tag. Me and Hugo both <laughs> made the same call there. I can't wait to see how him and Bubsky are slotting in. And, you know, knowing how these guys are, I imagine it has been, like, continuous high effort being put in from the both of them to get ready for this debut game with Astralis. Brilliant fake. Astralis, they take secret. Fnatic rotate B. Their only upper player is Crims, who is dinked in main earlier on. And Magis comes in through main, getting that kill. The rest come up through the vents in secret. And there's a bomb plant. Fnatic down in a four on two. They've got a kit, but they need the kills behind it. Flush with one. Golden does some damage, but he's got two players right below him and a third at the vents. Not an easy feat for him. Ooh, Dupri almost dead in the water, but Flusher has now got to flush them down the toilet. It's not happening. Dupri with a double and three in the round. And Astralis will start things off with style. Yeah, that was nice, right? Like the, the kind of classic Astralis misdirection on a map like Nuke. That's what they're so good at. And uh, they use it to devastating effect there. I feel like for a lot of teams facing Astralis right now, you might accidentally fall into like, not necessarily underestimating them, but maybe not expecting like the vintage Astralis level of CS, especially if you look at like the kind of recent timeline where Snappy and Yugi were in the squad. S tag going aggressive, shutting down Golden. Already secret secured. It's a fast play down towards B. The momentum behind them. Rotations haven't come through from Fnatic. And in this round, I imagine we see Astralis commit. I don't think they go for the fake again. I think this is them kind of calling the bluff of Fnatic, who they're hoping lean too heavily into that A bomb site. Now, maybe with JW getting that kill, that slows this round down. And we're back into that four on four now. He saw Magic's cross back and JW rotates up because he thinks it's going to be an A play. Coming back down as Device gets another kill and the scout finally getting rid of the round. Magic's Nathan down. And yeah, for me, Harry, one of the big questions I, I kind of want to ask someone in a post-match interview if we get the chance is like, how much impact and input has someone like Glaive or Zipex had, you know, for either these new two players to Astralis or to Magis in moving into this in-game leading role, right? Yeah. Uh, is Glaive sitting behind him in practice, rubbing his back and, and, t and pointing him in the direction that he should turn? I don't know. Yeah, you you know? One, of the, one of those two things, <laughs> right? Like How many hands has Glaive got? Yeah. That's the question that we're all wondering. But yeah, I, I'd love to know, like, what the process has been uh, of removing, not removing, but your IGL stepping down and then someone else, you know, obviously no doubt the Magis can do it, but like how, how much are you not copying, but taking from your old strap book and how much are you coming up with yourself? There's a lot of questions and this series is going to have hopefully a lot of answers. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that Frankie said is that, you know, she, she learned from interviews that, that they've said that in this iteration of the squad, S Tag and Bubsky had like their roles kind of crafted for them, and that wasn't the case for Snappy and Yugi. I always assumed that was the case, right? Like in my eyes, Snappy and Yugi were like the bandage, the quick bit of like first aid, and then we have like you know the actual uh, care that, that that helps sort everything out yeah. in the form of uh, S Tag and Bubsky. There was never any doubt in my mind that these two were going to be like the the cards that you hold on to long term, whereas the others were more like stand-ins, like just filling the void while you didn't have anyone else. And obviously, you know, like I think, I think for especially someone like Snappy, did a great job, but JW down here, gonna deal with Magis on that Zeus. That's what you love to see. Crims, he wants to, uh, he wants to continue getting as cheeky as JW does. He's waiting back here in main. Now, Zeus isn't quite the same as the knife. Do you think a Zeus is more or less skilled, Hugo? Skilled? Oh, uh, I don't. I don't really know about 
I couldn't even answer that question. It's right, more entertaining. Oh, I think. Fine. Look at uh, this. USP is doing the damage. How on earth? S Tag and Bobski. Okay, if there ever was a time to show why you're on the team, it's definitely right now. Yep. Luckily enough, Bobski's kind of doing a good job. You can imagine how much they're sweating in this position. Like, it's only USPs that Bobski's getting and the kills needed. S Tag going to finish it, it off. And that's why they pay him the big bucks, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. There we go. They recover it from a two on five. They get that third round for Astralis. Wow. I mean, like, this is already sparking up so many talking points. But one point I want to make, I want to flip the script, Harry, because, you know, Astralis, a lot of eyes are on them. Really, all the attention is on them. But let's remember who they're up against. These are the legends of the game. This is Fanatic, JW Zeusing in round number two of the, or round number three of the series, for crying out loud. Like, these guys are, are just so entertaining and such skilled individuals. Crims, I feel like, has never dropped off. Has he ever had a bad game? Probably not. Will he ever have a bad game? Probably not. And so, you know, this is not an easy matchup for Astralis, but hey, winning a two on five in round number three for the two new boys on the block, that's what I want. And more of that. Well, it's Device versus JW. A uh, head to head. Perhaps all this time itself, <laughs> and in recent years, Device definitely the man coming out ahead in it. Let's see, JW has the peak, and well, who knew? History destined to repeat itself as Device bests JW in the head-to-head. -head. They do lose Bobski back in lobby, and that is going to be the uh, the green light to hit B. Right? You've lost out on this player that was wrapping. You know now the rotations can come in very, very quickly, and so they just flood down into this site. They haven't committed to anything just yet, but it does seem like they're going to this time with the full belt and utility going in. I know that there's two players that ramp. Magisk has just cleared out the rest of the bomb site. Flusher does go peeking in, but doesn't get away with the kill. Yeah, Magisk just ducking below the shot, avoiding a haircut. Lots of grenades for Astralis. They're not actually looking to plant, they're looking to fight. And that could be a danger with three players on the ramp side. Eventually the bomb goes down, and Fnatic flashing in for the retake. Flash does nothing, but the kill comes through regardless. Golden with a quick shot, Dupree trades from the door, and this tag is still sitting on the site, still sitting on the bomb. There's a third man coming in on the wrap round. It's Brolin, and no one's watching this door. It's wide open, and he'll swing through with a quick kill. It's Dupree on three, Device on the AWP, and Fnatic all over this bomb site. They're gonna smoke it and tap it as well. They won't stick. They could have already had this round locked in. Finally, getting on the defuses, Crims cleans up two more kills, three in the round for him, and the first found for Fnatic. Nice little retake there, very patient as well. Stralis may have had strong afterplants, but losing that first fight to Golden, and then no one watching the decon door as uh, Brolin sneaks in on the flank, definitely uproots Astralis there. Still, a bomb palm is going to give them money, and they'll be, be able to come into round number five with a pretty decent buy, all things considered. Actually, worse than I assumed. Two pistols and a glil. At least JW won't have an AWP to fight back against last round. His shot did look dead on, but not connecting. S-Tag's going quick on top of main, into main, and he's going to get spammed back from the garage. Can't stop Brolin when he sits at the back. And uh, Cringe is going to get caught with a nade in hand. Nice shot from Dupree, but they won't commit towards a off the back of that kill. Maybe if they had S-Tag still in main, that could have been an option. But instead, they're going to look elsewhere. Device has managed to creep his way down towards Secret. And Flush is still holding on to Ramp. Uh-oh. That there now marks the rotation of JW. Flash goes in, and he's blinded Ooh. off the line. Match is going to pick that one up. We're into this four on three. Fnatic, the two players still in this upper site. That's going to be Brolin, and it's going to be Golden. Back to back as Golden actually departs from his teammate and tries to get himself set up in lobby. This is a good response. If you lose ladder room, you want to be taking hut, you want to be taking lobby so that you don't have to be holding all these angles, right? You need to know that that's clear so then you can focus your attention on main and heaven. And that's what they've done. Now, both players looking here. Golden gets first contact, Brolin flicks up. Still an awkward fight for Brolin to Ooh. win. And there it is, wow. Brolin with three. What a hold. From the young gun, you can see why I put him as my man to watch, because look at him go, four in the round. 
And, and a stellar recovery from Fnatic. Everything about it, you know. Golden especially does like such a, he doesn't get any kills, but he's, he's such a key player in that round. He pushes through Squeaky. He comms, you know, lobby's clear. Just watch heaven. And he's looking there. Brolin's watching main and like flicking between the two. And in the moment Golden makes contact, Brolin looks up, shuts it down. A great round from Fnatic and a great adjustment to losing ramp. Yeah, now the pistol's out for Astralis. The money has finally dripped down. I've liked how far some of these rounds are, right? Astralis not fear or not fearful of their opponent. And well, that much is showing at least, but maybe they should be. JW wallbanging Bubsky through the door. And Fnatic find a man advantage. We've only got one Deagle in this round. That's on Magis. He really has to do something if Astralis want any chance of making this round interesting. Because the Glocks, boy oh boy, they're not going to find all too much. Double peaked. Goodbye. JW pushing outside, but the Glock, oh, thinks him down low. He does recover, finding four and putting Fnatic on a third. Strong start here for the Swedes. But will the Danes come back with some destruction? Guns are out, two Galils, no AWP just yet. But luckily, JW's lost his in the meantime. Uh, before this game went live, we saw a little stat, we saw a little graphic that said Astralis were 24 to 7 against Fnatic in head to heads. That's crazy dominant. But I want to remind you one thing. Uh, last two times they played was in EPL and RTR. Both times Fnatic won those BO3 series. And those were with the full Astralis roster at the time. Obviously a different team now. But yeah, times are changing. We'll see if Fnatic can keep the occasion up. Magix, though, dropping the first man outside. It's golden gone. And Estrella setting up smokes off the back of that kill. Yeah, outside smokes going in to try and give them a wall, a bit of a veil to push behind. S-Tag leading the charge. Going to try and cross into Garage. Now, this is uh, kind of relying on JW not getting this information. So that Molotov is important. He doesn't spot that they're wrapping round. Brolin is holding close to this smoke, but is he ready for S-Tag, who's already so damn deep? Brolin's hiding, concealed by the smoke. He pops out, but in doing so, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place. JW, meanwhile, offering up a bit of resistance from Secret. Does get engaged by Bubski, and that's going to force him into a more passive angle down in the B site. JW runs for the hills. Now, while this has happened, look at Crimson Flusher. They cleared out lobby. They aggressed in through ramp and, and uh, squeaky door. And Crims is still a threat. They're aware of this, though. And Magisk is going to lock it in. So the bomb plant now found JW at a 1v3 who needs an ace at 29 points of health to win it. This isn't spelling fanatic round. And JW seems to agree. He's backing away. So it's a fourth on the board for Astralis. One thing I will say is, like, I think Magisk as an IGL is just, like, a great idea because I, I think, you know, if you, if you had to pick players in this team who have, like, the read of the game uh, on a level where, like, you know, you could give some, like, Glaive-level calls, obviously with him now helping out, right, since he's been kind of back in action but not playing, I feel like that's only going to help further. And I love this idea of molding Magisk into, into someone who can do that. Yeah, I think the future of Astralis is under question in terms of like, well, what, now we have seven players on the roster. Assuming that stays the same, what's the long-term plan? Are we swapping out players per tournament? And if so, well, having two players who can appropriately in-game lead is, is a great change. Astralis, again, trying to, uh, ch to change the game, as it were. Good to see Fnatic really focusing on that outside control. They do fall in that round, but putting two players to fight outside is uh, is definitely the right call. We got our fan cams as well. Mostly Danes, I imagine. I don't blame them. Stralis in the lead. You love to see it. I feel like, you know, 80% of Danish people own a Danish flag. <laughs> At least that's like what the stats would show there on, on those fan cams. So let's uh, let's keep testing that. If you're Danish, do you own a Danish flag? Let us know. S-Tag over here. He's looking to plant the Danish flag in garage as he goes aggressive, trying to take it back from the Swedes. That's a bit of rivalry at the borders, and Golden going to win it out for Fnatic. Right now, this is still Swedish territory. And so Astralis, they embark on a voyage down here towards ramp instead. Flusher in this position. JW nearby for that rotation, similar to what we saw a few rounds ago. And JW makes his presence known with that kill onto the device. 
fast flick with the orb is what we come to expect from this man but astralis they'll be given ramp control as fanatic hold a heavy advantage in the numbers they welcome astralis down towards that b-bomb site flush awaits in the wings behind the silo there is one molotov magis has it out but it's going to go in towards dark instead so flusher will still remain unnoticed unchecked unknown until he strikes there's one buying time flash goes high and flusher peeks out wide two kills for him make it a third flusher shutting it down as flusher does and and Fnatic put another round on the board, 4-4. I'm already liking how competitive this map is. It is Astralis' pick in the series. The T-side start, pretty damn good considering how we know this map to go. But I mean, Counter-Strike is getting more T-sided by the day. Our earlier series, OG Nip, was 10-5 oh. T-sides across the board. This camera angle is beautiful. I love it. I love what I'm seeing. That was. I feel like I'm watching a film now whenever I watch <laughs> CS Pro, ESL broadcasts. Here's Bobski trying to get down the vents. Fast feet, but he does sneak oh. down. And actually padded feet as well. He does it quietly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Prim, no. Oh, he's <laughs> fed the beast. Bobski down in the vents. Gets away with a kill and an AK now with armor behind it. That is a threat. And if he beats Flusher, that there could be the B site Ooh. opened up by Bubski. B is now home to Astralis. And Fnatic is so far away from these rotations even beginning. Problems just now starting. What? Nice flick from Brolin to find that kill. JW falling there in after. It's a bit messy. It's a bit chaotic. And Dupree's Deagle good for one more. But Brolin 1v3. <laughs> Bomb down on B, and with a man wrapping around, it's Device here with the orb. He's got it dead to rights. Five for Astralis. Dude, there's so many layers to that round, Harry. Props for keeping up the commentary, because, yeah, I mean, the amount of things that went down, the amount of different pushes, uh, different levels. Great work from Bobski. As soon as he gets that kill as well, once you kill Flusher, you know, you look at that kill, uh, kill feed and you go, well, ramp's open, and we just see a player, like, walk into ramp with the Deagle, taking down JW on rotation. That flick is ridiculous. And poor Magis, but it doesn't matter. Device gets a free orb off the back of that kill onto JW. It seemed like he wasn't ready for it. Off the back of that vent dive, and I say dive, more like sneak, because as you said, he, he crept down that ladder, and whether Crims knew it or not, he was sneaking down to, to maybe go down and check. Little did he know there was already a man waiting for him. Good start for Astralis, so they are in control. The money back in their favor, and sending a message to Fnatic as this buy comes through. JW's crossed over to red. That is always a little bit scary for me. Magisk. I don't like it. I don't love it, but you know, JW certainly does. Let's see. Will he get rewarded for his patience? Like Magisk is Ooh. oh, there we go. Yeah. He saw him. He saw him that time. What sick time is a charm. Oh. And there it is, the wombo combo from Magisk. Nade and a headshot. That's all you need. Man advantage taken now. For Astralis, five on four. And Device still waiting back here in the lobby. Flusher going aggressive and looking to get stuck in. It's it's just a lobby crunch from Fnatic in response to this. Now, oh, they're going to catch Device looking the wrong way. And Brolin finds himself another. Wow. Lobby gets reclaimed by Fnatic. And that is a really nice way of like, you know, you, you lose a man outside. Okay, they've taken outside. We'll take something else. They crunch into lobby. That late in the round, Astralis just weren't expecting it. That normally happens right out of the gate. And so now Astralis going for a last ditch attempt Ooh. into this B site. The molly is well timed. And so they will get in. They will have a chance to get this bomb down. Yeah, uh, Fnatic is still waiting for lurk players or someone still on that top site because, you know, Astralis have been all over the map at all times. And they're a bit late to be. That molly cuts off Brolin's vent rotation. It's going to be ramp, heavy ramp indeed from three as Flusher comes in on this long flank with the MP9. As Tag pushed up close, Astralis a man down in the post plant, but using the bomb as an extra player. Two flashes, not really focused on that, more about the gunfights. 
Already CT's out. Ramp Stag's gonna hear this and come it across, but they surely will check Dark. Roller goes for it. The AK is immediately gonna get a headshot. And Dupree in the blink of an eye is in a clutch. A one on three. Crim's caught. Quick kill. Now Flusher running him down with the SMG through the air. Dupree with a double. And the tap on the bomb might force the fight from Dupree. He goes out wide and Golden's gonna win it, but no time, no kit. It's an Astralis round nonetheless. Great work from Dupree. Dupree. He wins the one on three. Look at this. This was sick for Magisk. Whoop. I love it. Add a I bing, love it. Add a boom. And so now, you know, the money's broken for Fnatic. Astralis, they are in the driver's seat and a tactical timeout even called on in. They've already used two of them in this game. So, you know, kind of setting the tone. Like, I feel like you can always tell how much team a pressure is under by how many tack pauses they've used has had Fnatic pegged as that team, right? Like, it feels like they use them when, when they feel they have to, and right now it is starting to feel that way. Look at Magis talking away, really, like, taking some leadership during this tack pause. I like that from him. Keeping the rest of the squad informed. Fnatic, what have they come up with in this little timeout? They've made a decision to go for a force buy here. That's, a, that's an interesting decision to make. You know, if they take an eco now, they're buying up in this next round. It's not like they were they were in like a double eco situation. So they have put a lot on the line here. And this is something that really feels like it could make or break this CT half for the Swedes. Yeah, but if there's any team that can do it with pistols, it would be Fnatic. JW dropped into the vents early. Won't let them get behind him. But, oh, is he ready for how close Magis is? Now he will be. The nade going through. And JW backs up further, but already tagged up heavy. He's actually got another rotate in the form of Golden coming through from the ramp side. So two lower players. He looks like he wants to go through. Magis reloads. Ooh, JW almost finding the timing. But Magis backs up and lives to fight another day. Astralis waiting in the lobby, this time a little more aware of what could be an aggressive push from Fnatic as it has been in the past. Crim's getting killed on that A site. Broden getting spammed, but nothing connected. And Flusher dinks device for six damage through the wall. is gonna push up and trades are good for Astralis as they should be against low economy buys. Bubsky late picking up the bomb and Brolin, ooh, he could cause a bit of a ruckus here. He's gonna actually beat the timing for S-Tag coming back into the lobby and now they have no idea where he's gotten up to. Unfortunately for him, that bomb is already wrapped around the silo. He's got the right idea. He's just a few seconds late to the party and he has to make noise if he wants to go silo. So it's gonna be a creep down the ladder and back into the lobby. Still kills up for grabs though. If I'm S-Tag, I'm so worried. There it is, there's the peak from Brolin. AK retrieved, and now, can he do something? It was a 1v3, turn 1v2. Bubski and Magisk at this A site, trying to hold the line. Brolin, he's gonna give this a go. These are the rounds that he is made for, it feels like. But it's not an easy opposition. There's one, but the double swing. Bubski and Magisk playing for the contact. They get what they were looking for and they dish out some of the same. It does feel like Astralis, like this team right now, is looking very much on the same page, as you would hope so, right? You know, double peaking that that 2v1 immediately. Uh, S-Tag has been really good at getting control, even when, you know, sometime, sometimes going down to the garage, but we've been seeing him wrap heaven. We've been seeing him drop main very far. So, you know, doing doing the roles that <laughs> often leave you dead first, but when they don't, he's been, uh, he's been wrapping that A-site quite well. So, yeah, Astralis in control. This is an excellent T-side, JW. Back on the Zeus, we've seen it before, and we'll see it again. Magis is running down B, and he's going to meet the Taser around the corner. Oh, <laughs> JW, come on, let's go. Let's oh, get it. Bobski okay. with a double kill, actually. That might change the aim of the game. Oh, oh no, the JW! Jump. <laughs> Magis has got his, uh, his running shoes on, and he leaps over the top of it. Now, you know, he doesn't have the uh, eyes in the back of his head, so he didn't know that Crims was there, but this should be the end of... Uh, Crimson's little resurgence at ramp, and indeed it is. Astralis, they take themselves an eighth round. Reinvestment gonna come back through for, for Fnatic, but it's lacking that AWP on JW. It's rifles out across the board, and unless Crims buys one, they don't have a kit either. Yeah, man, Bobski's looking great individually. Like, that's obviously no surprise. There's a reason he was picked up from the Mad Lions roster. He's been a, a, a huge talking point for so long, and, uh, and yeah, it's great to see him on this team.
I imagine nothing feels better than stopping JW from JWing you. Yeah. As much of a tongue twister as that is to say. So Magic is feeling good right now. Ooh. Well, maybe not. Maybe actually <laughs> he regrets every decision he's ever made. A golden, I think, knows. Ooh, the, the, yeah. the, the smoke bug as well just looked like it flirted around, and so they knew he was still there. Bobski's gotten down the vents again. How's he done this? Cheeky. He does it every time. Bobski's like a ghost. He just disappears. He appears. It's horrible. Oh, they're ready for it. Flusher is keeping an eye on those windows on B, so at least aware of the possibility considering it lost Fnatic around to pistols. But Bubsky's not going for the traditional wrap. He's coming back up through secret. Golden with his eyes trained, but his shot not connecting. And Bubsky's going to take that kill right back as Device dies. So a four on four for Astralis with still Magisk low. He's still trying to cross outside, but Crims has taken up the position that Astralis might think is clear because they did just kill Golden here. Ooh, Grims, this is not a nice place to be. Magis does move in. Brolin, they've seen him, but he shuts down the first. Oh, and a follow-up. Brolin, maybe again. Dupree does at least get the trade, and we're into this 1v1. Dupree versus Flusher. Molotov into heaven to really sell this A play, and Flusher, the longer he waits, the more of the fool he becomes. Dupree gets the bomb down at B, and it's going to dawn a little too late on Flusher. Ooh. Now realizing exactly what's happened, he drops down through heaven in towards ramp. Dupree is holding the vents, and this is something that works brilliantly for Dupree. The bomb is planted for Decon. So, you know, the, the, the more time that he just waits in the vents, the, the better, really, because Flush has got so many angles to clear. Smoke on the bomb, he doesn't have a kit. Door swings wide, Flush is off of it. Dupree moving in. Here's the footsteps out of ammo. This is a little bit messy, and they do get the kill. It's still going to be close. I don't I don't think Flush has got this, but I actually... I think he does. Oh, no, I think he might. Uh, oh, no, 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 I was right. You made me doubt myself, Hugo, and for that, I could probably never repay you. But nine believe. on the board for Astralis. Yeah, I mean, very messy for Dupree, but like he doesn't know if Flusher has a kit or not, right? So he has to spray, he has to, to do something, and just living in the smoke with his knife out for a couple more seconds is all the time he needs. Yeah, I don't have the music kit on, Harry. Sadly, I, uh, I guess I'm off, but hey, Astralis, they're back on, on the board, 9-4. This is a great T side, and with five rounds in a row, Fnatic, they've got some answers to bestow. Another rifle round coming through with no AWP for the likes of JW. Astralis go back to this outside control that's been so prolific for them. Brolin's pushed lobby, but that's a sweaty spot. Bubsky is ready for the lobby push from the most off angle you can find. And JW, aggressive in the secret, will actually get traded by Magis. There's still another man outside that they're not aware of. Take a look at Golden, who's waiting in the garage. He drops S-Tag on that cross, but Dupree has heaven. Crims comes out to assist, makes some noise. Dupree sends him packing, and he'll double down to Flusher in Hellside as well. They know where Golden is, and although he has the bomb. They've got him trapped like an animal in a cage. Magix with the Molotov. Golden wins the fight. And now Dupree, full health versus 30. Golden's going to swing for the engagement. He tries to use the smoke from the grenade to help him. But if anything, it's a hindrance. And Astralis will take 10. Very, very close for Fnatic, but close is not good enough. Especially when you're broke. With Bobski just then, you know, that that I, I imagine like when they were trying to hire him, they were like, Look, we, we have plenty of stars, we're looking for the inverse of that. And so Bobski's like, Oh, you mean rats? And that's what he's looked to become, right? Like shuts it down in in just the most horrific of places. Yeah. That's not a spot you're checking as a CT clearing lobby. Like a book. Oh, device, creepy crawly through the smoke. It's tagged down low, but Magis is drawing most of the attention. Fnatic don't really want a lot to do with this one, considering how favorably these outside fights have gone for Astralis so far. Flushes above the boxes, but falls off, and Bubsky does the same. JW inside of the lobby. It almost feels like Fnatic's position in this map so far, but getting that kill and getting out alive, he actually crosses towards the ramp side. Golden again in garage, and Astralis are moving. As the smoke fades, there's going to be some spraying commencing. One, but that's it. Just one. One and done. Brolin Ooh. hidden. No one checks this ever, by the way. Brolin gets that one for free. 
And Magis gets shot in the back as well. It's fine. Tea side. Now that is dominant stuff. Let's see if Astralis can keep it up or if Fnatic will bounce back with this pistol round. They got a good bit of utility. Astralis are on the full armor. They ain't thinking about the post plants. They won't let Fnatic get a bomb down, or at least they hope. Might not be that easy though. Dupree walking towards the hut. Brolin is already in position, but tucked up is Dupree, not wanting to play too aggressive as they wait for Fnatic to come to them. And it will be a full A execute. Late delay, smokes come through towards main. A couple of rafters men as well. Dupree catches the first man out of the hut. Magis falls in off the top with three. Disgusting stuff. A heavy A side setup for Astralis. And Magis just body blocks Dupree, takes all the bullets and fires off all the correct ones as well, killing three Fnatic players. Doesn't get much better than that one, huh, Harry? Not at all, man. I, I'm, I'm, so th I'm so happy that this is what we're seeing. Like, you know, Astralis, they, they've been through some turbulent stuff. And, and, and you know, it's like when, when your ship is sinking, you're not bothered about looking to find the perfect materials to plug those holes. You're putting whatever you can in that place to stop it from going down. And then once you get back to port and you've had some time, then you bring in the real stuff, right? And that's what I think we have now. This is like an Astralis that can do damage, even though it's not the Astralis we know and love at least with two of these players, right? Taking a look at this one, this is just locks here for Fnatic. It's, it's just going to be a slot. It shouldn't be anything else. JW is like trying to get cheeky, but they don't give him any room. 12 rounds for Astralis. Fnatic now coming in with the bye. It looks like Astralis are having a lot of fun with it, which, uh, which you know, is obviously a super important if you want to perform well. If you're not enjoying playing with your teammates and, and having a laugh alongside, then, you know, this going to eventually implode. But, I mean, it's easy to be smiley and, and happy when you're 12-5 up against Fnatic. But, yeah, hey, it's there. It's there right now. 12-5, Fnatic with a buy. And we've still got the bonus from Astralis. They will buy up an orb around the SMG's device. What have you got for us, bud? Where are you going with that one? He's going to sit safe towards CT. S-Tag takes the spot in main. And Fnatic, they're going to be walking outside. They've got grenades going, but no smokes. Looking to take fights. Maybe they don't expect the orb in round number three of the half, but when you're against Astralis, you've got to expect the unexpected. Hello? Device isn't content with just one. He's looking to get stuck in, and this reposition, getting aggressive from the passive lie outside is something that Fnatic, I don't think will be ready for, but I'd love to be proven wrong. It's gold and waiting over towards red, and let's see if he can kind of piece together what's, I mean, gold, I would hate to be golden right now. Like everyone else has left. You're all alone. And they are throwing some utility to try and get gold out of Holy danger. It's like, Gon's like, please guys, literally anything, any smokes you have, I just get me out of here. And he might be able to get away with the outside smokes going in. Still trapped behind Red. He's going to stick around and look for the fight here outside. Missed shot from Device. And so Golden, that nade almost finishing the job. It's a ramp play from the rest of Fnatic, but they haven't cleared out S-Tag. Oh. The Org doesn't deliver the kill onto Flusher, but it does bring him down low. Bubski, UMP in a dream, and there it is. The double kill at ramp. AK retrieved and Golden coming in far too late to make much of a difference. 1v4, 25 seconds left. This is all building up to what should be a 13th round for Astralis. Yeah, Bubski keen to close it out. But playing smart, playing safe, dropping the flash and going for his escape. It's Golden looking to chase down anything he can. And unfortunately, Astralis might even kill him after time. That just looks ready to drop the hat, but it's not going to happen. And Golden feels like he will be able to get out alive. A small victory in a sea of losses. Astralis 13 to 5. And I mean, that just means Golden doesn't take any money into the next round. So Fnatic probably just have to eco around this one AK, a few deagles as they wait for 14 to hit them in the face, as it were. Nice uh, hold from Bubsky, S-Tag, right? Like, you know, he could have got two there, but the fact that he kills one and damages the other just sets Bubsky up for success, right? That SMG mows through the first player, the second player's on 10 points of health, and so it's no issue to clean it up. And now Astralis wielding AKs into this as well. It's only getting worse for Fnatic. They are actually going to force buy into this one. So, yeah, this is uh, this is going to leave them with with no full rifle rounds left unless they want to, you know, give away 15 and, and potentially play for OT. I'm of course assuming that they don't win this force buy, but maybe that's the wrong assumption. We'll have to see. But with device hitting orb shots and four rifles around that, this is looking like the Astralis we know and love. Oh, 
fast A plate. Fnatic gonna try and get JW down the vent, but he never survives the journey. It's a sad sight indeed when JW can't get down the vent. And now that man advantage taken, Golden has a chance here, and there it is. Four on four given back over, but quick as it can, the trade comes in from S-Tag. Dupree, another, and looking for a little bit more. <laughs> Stay away from Dupree's a bomb site. He puts up two, he leaves it on Brolin, oh. and Bobski's there to lock it in. This is a dangerous look at Astralis. Yeah. This is, you know, this is Fnatic they're up against. Now, admittedly, right, we're coming off the back of some time away, but still, like, Fnatic, they were in really good form. They briefly claimed that number one spot in the world, if you remember back at like the, the Pro League R to, uh, RTR kind of time period. And, and this was a team that had been looking really deadly. Right now, they are getting made such quick work of by Astralis. It is a terrifying sight indeed, Hugo. Yeah, Fnatic beat Astralis in EPL and RTR, both online as well. So like, you know, this is a, this is a huge research, it's a huge recovery. And I imagine Astralis are feeling extremely motivated with this new roster. The results are showing. And will they push it over the line? Fnatic, they're, they're half buying. They put some money in, but they're also saving for an actual gun round against 15. It's not a pretty picture, but at least they're going to have a rifle round. Not the best nade, but no problem. No worry. Flushes out ramp. There's no one here. There's no one watching it. And so that's a lot of room being gifted over. Bubsky's holding B, but that means he can start to wrap Hellside and potentially kill Device. Menchisk is shooting from above, but no one's even looking at this one. Oh, oh, D like oh, fell on his head. Oh, oh the Deagle, it's not going to be great after firing a few shots. And Device turns round, but only to die to the Galil of Roland. S tag out from secret, out from lower, and in for a double. It's going to be the A site uh, gone here for Astralis as Fnatic take control. But are they ready for the ramp wrap? This position was supposedly open. Oh, dear. Oh dear, Crims. Oh no, he's gone. Bobski looking for the last man. It's just Golden left. Tech nine and a dream trying to keep Fnatic afloat in this series. Whoa. Oh, it's not pretty. Tech nine. Now here's something that's really cool. For S Tag and Bobski, this was a two on four. If you remember, in round number three, they secured that two on five between the two of them to keep it in favor of Astralis. Well, here, 2v4 up against up against weapons in the hands of Fnatic. They're able to get it done again. This the these two new players certainly making a bit of an impression here in their inaugural game of Counter-Strike for Astralis. Hell of a debut. Hell of a debut. 15 to 5, Harry. This one's as good as done. Fnatic, they've got a full buy round. They've got everything they need in this one, right? Bomb plan off the back of actually saving some money in the previous. But, you know, that's that's about the only positive I can turn around to is the fact that they have a chance. The chance is up against 15. And at a moment's notice, after just a couple of well-placed shots, this game could be over and we could be heading to trade. Whoop. Device, here it is. Oh, and another. Come on, why stop at two? Why stop at two? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. You know, you've got two, there's more. There's like three, there's four. Who knows, maybe even a fifth. Device waiting around, has S-Tag nearby. Now, Roland will best his teammate. Device, a hop, skip, and a jump, but he just about gets out of danger. Still a threat, still a nuisance with this AWP outside. Molotov gonna rain on in, Device. Oh, the Flame Walker. Somehow he is unscathed by the Molotov. And now looking to get his money's worth out of this orb. Still floating around outside. Brolin ready and waiting for it. But that's when Magis swings and secures it with a double. Flusher 1v3. A lot to do. And Magis